Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. Today is part two of a three-part series on the state of education in the United States. Part one was The Broken System, and I invite you to watch that. There is a link to it in my description box below. Today is part two, The Results of the Broken System, and tomorrow will be part three, Fixing the Broken System. As I pointed out in part one of this series, The Broken System, link below, our schools are now churning out nothing but illiterate ignorami. We now have two entire generations who can neither read nor write nor perform the most basic math. Now the reasons for this is somewhat complicated and I went into it yesterday in part one of the series, The Broken System, link below. But to recap, essentially the problem is this. A hundred or so years ago, you had teachers who had to have an education of about this level, pretty high. But those teachers said to themselves, you know, there's really no reason to teach things like Latin, it's a dead language, so let's drop that out of the curriculum. And so the next generation of teachers was only this educated. Well, that generation of teachers themselves said, well, you know, there's some things here in the curriculum that don't really make sense. Why are we doing all of this advanced mathematics? Let's drop that out of the curriculum as well. So the next generation of teachers only learned this much and they dropped things out of the curriculum so the next generation only learned this much and they dropped things out of the curriculum and then even less was learned by the following generations to the point where we now have teachers who are themselves very uneducated bordering on illiterate if not outright illiterate themselves they themselves know nothing and so therefore can't teach anything to anyone since students now spend 12 years of compulsory education that does not even teach basic skills nor any skills in order to succeed in life, what is the educational system teaching instead? In short and bluntly, it instead indoctrinates students to believe in communist and socialist philosophies. We see this evidenced everywhere in our society today, with the rise, for example, of politicians such as Alexandria Occasional Cortex, always referred to on this show as Red Cortez because it fits, Bernie Sanders, who I cannot figure out has, has been around so long, unlike Alexandria Occasional Cortex, Bernie Sanders has been around long enough that he knows this stuff is bad. And we have a, now a host of other socialists and communists who have now infiltrated our halls of government at many different levels. Now this has all been made possible, of course, by our younger generations who have been indoctrinated to believe that communism and socialism are good ideas. What younger people were never taught is that communism and socialism always fail, killing millions of people in the process. They were never taught that in the 20th century alone, socialism and communism killed in excess of 120 million innocent people. They were never taught, well in fact they were taught, that socialism in Venezuela has been a, a resounding success, despite the obvious evidence to the contrary. When Venezuela was a free market economy, Venezuela was the richest and most populous and prosperous nation in South America. Today, after less than a decade of socialism, there are regular blackouts. Essential services are all but non-existent. All goods and services have virtually vanished from the shelves and, as typified by all communist and socialist nations, not even toilet paper is available. There are people who dig through garbage in order to find food. And of course, the inflation rate is well over 100%. And yet our younger generation have never been exposed to these facts. We also see this indoctrination in the rise of the Antifa, a violent communist organized terrorist group who believe that the only way to fight what they consider fascism, which is essentially who is anyone who is right of Che Guevara, is to incite violence, to commit violence against others almost randomly, and to cause property damage in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they are supported by a free press who will not report their vicious nature because the press themselves are communists. Remember, it is a secondary motto on this show and always scrolls by in my lower third. Nothing that you see in the press is real. Nothing. 
Now, this indoctrination is also evidenced by the social justice warrior movement, who find fault with almost everything in society in every walk of life and believe that only a communist or socialist utopia can provide any kind of relief. This is also evidenced in the subset of SJWs known as snowflakes, who were so thoroughly indoctrinated to believe in communist and socialist philosophies that they can neither comprehend nor even cope with any idea that challenges their indoctrination. They insist on retreating to safe spaces that will insulate them from any idea that will challenge their indoctrination. In short, the result of the broken educational system are most, if not all, of the socio-political problems that plague the United States and often bleed over internationally. And as bad as the indoctrination is, the classrooms today have become something that people of prior generations simply wouldn't recognize. A number of teachers that I've seen interviewed here on YouTube, and please feel free to search YouTube for like, you know, teacher interviews and things like that. They will describe their classrooms as places where students make editorial comments or talk over their teachers, making it impossible for those who want to learn to be able to do so. And in the case of some inner city schools, it appears that the classrooms have become totally uncontrollable, as you see in my green screen behind me today. In addition, what were once schoolyard fights relegated to a fight behind the school during recess or after school has ended for the day have become a part of the classroom itself or are common occurrences in the hallways. Nor are these fights limited simply to student disagreements but may also be involved in gang warfare. And this is one of the many reasons that schools now employ security officers or have police officers stationed at those schools full time. The schools themselves have become war zones. Now this also appears to be a really growing unfortunate disdain, particularly among young African Americans for education itself. They seem to consider education to be the purview of whites who they believe are systemically discriminating against African Americans and using the educational system to do so, and so they refuse to become educated. To this, I have to say, if you refuse to become educated, then you will be relegated forever to flipping burgers. You will never advance in life. You will always be a failure. And in that, you will have no one to blame but yourself. Now, whose fault is all this? To my shame, it is largely the fault of the baby boomers and my generation. We have much to account for. And I will speak about this more in tomorrow's episode, part three, Fixing the Broken System. So that is all that I really have to say about that for today. So thanks for watching. Please check out yesterday's video, part one, The Broken System, link below. And if you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same, and to share me on social media. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via Subscribestar, my PayPal tip jar, or a link on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all three in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch, and remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.